Hey guys, Pokazala here, and welcome back to 999. Last time we got out of the. Uh, what did we get out of? I, remember, I can't remember. <laughs> Alright, we did that before. That was the thing before. Um, we uh, had a very dialogue heavy episode last episode. We discovered this big room with hospital beds with the number three, seven, and eight on the doors. One of the doors is not marked, which seems suspicious. And as we looked at it, it seemed that the red, the, uh, the recognition devices, weren't operative. So we all split apart and uh, we went looking for it. We also met up with the rest of the team, by the way. That's what we were all looked for it. But then when we came back, it suddenly worked and Snake was gone. And of course, Clover wanted to look for Snake, which we did, but we couldn't find him. So we had to move on. But in order to move on, we couldn't take everybody with us. So one person needed to sacrifice themselves. In this case, Ace did that. He sacrificed himself by injecting himself with an anesthetic. And uh, now we are asked to which door we want to go through. And we are going to pick door seven. I... This is also the door I chose the first time I played it. I think... From what I remember. I'm gonna go with door seven. Okay. Seven it is. Yeah. Alright then. That means June's gotta go through eight. What? Why? What? Sansa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, but finally began to explain. If the six of us are gonna keep going without leaving anyone behind, there are only three ways we can do it. Plan A. Have three, five, and eight go through seven, and four, six, and seven go through eight. Plan B. Four, five, and seven go through seven, and three, six, and eight go through eight. Four, three, six, and seven go through seven, and four, five, and eight get eight. There are no other combinations. In other words, three and four, and seven and eight can never go through the same doors. You get it now? As Santa finished, June looked over at Jimpe, tears welling up in the at the corners of her corners of her eyes. Oh no! They're saying we aren't going to see each other again for a long time. A long time is days. We're just going to not see each other for maybe an hour or two. <sighs> Jimpe felt as if June felt just as June did. He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face. But he knew that if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order to, f in order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to he was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did the best to smile. Hey, come on! You're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors. Remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah, probably. Probably? She didn't sound very hopeful. It was seven that interjected. I'm sure they're gonna connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? Because we all have to get through the number nine door. If they don't, then neither team can get through door nine. Exactly. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I don't think so either. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. He's not gonna end this game until we get through the nine door. And even then... Who says that the number nine doesn't have a puzzle behind it? June said nothing. Mm. The, the tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. 
He met them, and with what reassurance he could manage, laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's gonna be fine. We're, we're gonna see each other again. I promise. June bit her lip and gave him an almost imperceptible nod. Yes. Promise? Promise. Her voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice shattered the moment. <sighs> you guys are done, right? He stretched and continued. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go into separate groups. I figure I'll take eight and Clover can take seven. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismal than a... Oh, this, it was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. All right, we're ready to go then. Let's move. At Santa's command, this pl group split and headed for the respective doors. Clover, Seven, and Junpei walked towards door Seven. Santa, Lotus, and June headed for door Eight. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. Seven took a deep breath. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. It's open. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Seven and Clover leaped through the door. Let's do this! Hurry! The moment they did, the bracelets beeped. The detonators in the bracelet had been activated. Junpei stepped forward in f to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. <sighs> he looked towards to his right, towards door 8. Jun stood there, a mirror, mirror image of Junpei. She turned and looked toward him. Their eyes met. They nodded. Jun. Jumpy. Their farewell took almost 1.5 seconds. What the hell are you doing, Junpei? Then someone took a hold of Junpei's arms and hauled them bodily through the door. Oh, him bodily through the door, sorry. <laughs> he heard the sound of the numbered door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left! No time to waste, guys! Let's get moving! Seven led the way down the hallway. Junpei and Clover followed him as fast as they could. After what seemed like far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hall. Look! The door on the left! I can see the dead! There was no time to rest or catch their breath. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel of the dead. <sighs> they all panted. <laughs> Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> He's very happy. I love his mouth. <laughs> the way it's drawn. His smell seemed to force, seemed forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but... Whew, you never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some of the sweat from his head and neck. Clover smirked at him. I would have thought a guy your size would have bigger balls than that. <laughs> Clover, don't antagonize him already. What? What the hell did you just say? Say it again! I dare you! You have no... You little... You wanna die? I'd like to see you try. That rhymes. You fucking brat! All right, let's go! Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for... this. It's not gonna do us any good. <laughs> hmm. Gosh. Junpei sighed. Sometimes he wondered if the doors in the puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Wait here for a minute, alright? I'm gonna go see if there are any other doors. They didn't respond, but Junpei wasn't in the mood for a conversation anyway. We just came through this door. Ah, and of course it's shut tight. There's a short hallway on the left here. And an iron wall. I doubt I can get through it. At last he gave up and returned to Seven, who was tapping lightly on the wooden door. This door's the only option we've got, right? 
Yeah, looks like it. Hey, something's written on the door. On that iron plate. It says operating room. If this thing's telling the truth, there could be body parts inside here. Well, this is probably not going to be pleasant. Something about it made Junpei feel... Junpei feel nervous. Well, there's no point to standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Someone grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. And slowly opened the door. Maybe I should stop doing uh, instead of... Uh. <clears throat> Sorry. I was uh, reprimanding myself for the way I read text for some reason. The creak of the hinge sounded like a groan of an old woman. Uh -huh. What's wrong? No, it, it's nothing. A chill snaked its way down to Junpei's spine. Let's just go. Quickly, he gathered what courage he could and took the first step into the room. Seven followed with Clover right behind him. Huh? Part of the room just past the door was obscured by a screen. What the hell is this? An operating Why room. Why don't we take a look? Hey, Clover! Clover's curiosity got the better of her, and she darted past Junpei to peer around the screen. Ah! Uh-oh. Her scream nearly blew out Junpei's eardrums. What? Clover! She and Seven, he and Seven, ran towards Clover to see what had frightened her. Hey, what's wrong? They rounded the screen, and the cause of her outburst was immediately clear. Wh what the hell is this? Is... Is this a corpse? No. It was something that looked kind of like a human lying across some sort of bed. No, not a bed. An operating table. The table sat on a rusty steel lift, and a cluster of bright operating lights shone down on it from the ceiling. We should probably take a closer look. Yeah. Slowly they approached. As they got closer to the body, it became clear that it wasn't a body at all. This is... What the hell? That's just a huge doll or something. A... Uh, doll? Clover did not look terribly comfort comforted. Slowly, she approached the operating table and looked as intently as possible from as far away as possible at the thing. At the thing. <sighs> Junpei could see her relax. You're right. It's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. She heaved a great sigh of relief and wiped a few drops of sweat from her forehead. Seven smirked. <laughs> well, I guess it would have been weird if you actually had any balls. Shut it! Don't you start with me, fatty! Jesus. Oh, <laughs> what's this? You want a piece of me, short stuff? Yeah, okay, bring it again. on, you whale! Not the time hey, for it, guys. guys! Not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. <sighs> hmm. I still don't know what the things are under her eyes are. Are they just moles? Could they be moles? But uh, they're so perfectly spaced out, like someone placed them there. Jeez. Anyway, it looks like he's got something the two of you could stand to have a little more of. I'm talking about a heart. Huh? Uh, uh, oh, this? You mean on his chest? Yeah. It was set a little higher, higher than normal for a human body, but from the shape of the organ, there could be no doubt it was a heart. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. You think maybe it's like a medical mannequin or something? Something like, like maybe that. Maybe it's got more personal uses. Seven, did you see any, like, sexual organs on that mannequin? Because I didn't. Seven's grin was more than a little perverted. <laughs> Clover glared at him. Anyway, how about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay. Sure thing. Seek a way out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Not the time yet. Seek a way out. So, here we are again, in a puzzle room. Mm. That looks like you can use it. 
A scalpel that's not rusty. Seems like it was put here for a reason, huh? You think it's telling us to cut something? Yeah, I do. I have to do the entire range of my voice now. Very high? Very low. To normal. <laughs> None of this other stuff looks, looks useful. Yeah, it's all pretty rusty. A medical mannequin with its guts showing. Ew. Gross. Hey, Junpei? There's a slit in this thing's chest. Yes, yeah, there sure is. Yeah, sure is. There's something in here. Maybe we can- There's something in there. Maybe we can get it out. <laughs> Damn it! Stinking thing won't budge. It's stuck. Well, I guess you can't use force on this thing then. I need- We need something small that can lift- Then can fit in that little hole. An internal organ, specifically a lung. Can I not use my scalpel? I can't. You can see these things internal organs. If only we had something I could fit in those cracks, maybe we could take some of the internal organs. The table that the mannequin is sitting on. I'm doing this part last because probably a lot of things that we need to check here. They use these for surgery, right? Let's see, strangers, cups, a plate. There's a sort of scissorish a scissor-ish thingy. Kosher forceps. I don't think they're that kosher. Oh, those are those scissors? They look kind of funny. No, that's probably a pair of kosher forceps. Surgeons use them during operations. They can't hold. They can hold blood vessels shut and keep the tissue out of the way. We can use it to pull stuff out of small holes or something like that. Small holes, you say? A bunch of surgical tools. Okay, nothing much else here, huh? Okay, well, there's another... Is this, a... this bed doesn't look very comfortable. Another medical mannequin? From the looks of it, it... this one's a chick. She has a name, too. Lucy. Poor thing. Looks like L Miss Lucy only has a head and a left arm. Maybe we were supposed to gather all her parts? Could be. What's this thing? It's got these short iron legs. Maybe it's a heater. Or a furnace. There's nothing inside it. Okay, well, nothing more else here. Well, that's a torso. Ew, that's gross! This is the chest. It's a woman's chest. The heart's gone, but it's pretty hot. A seven. If that kind of thing is your kind of thing turns you on seven, you're a real creepo. I was gonna say, do you in the chest need in time alone seven? Maybe you're supposed to heat something like that gauze to kill a bacteria to kill the bacteria? There's a boiling thingy over there. There's, there's nothing on the lid and or in the drawers. No? Huh. There are a whole bunch of bottles on the shelf. They're all they all look like medicine. They've got labels, but they're all big medical words that I don't understand. The drawer is empty. Yeah, nothing there. Nothing on the lower shelf. Okay. That's a lot of medicine. I wonder if one's a little. I wonder if one's one of these is a laxative. Yeah, it sounds kind of gross, but I'm pretty sure every one of us has has had the same idea. If we had some laxative, then maybe we could crap out the bombs Zero put in us. Unfortunately, damn it! I don't know what medicine does what here. Okay, well. We can go here. That's it, probably the door we came from. Judging. Looks like it's locked. Guess we're gonna have to find a key for this one. Okay, nothing else we could do here. What about here? Preparation room. Locked. 
We can probably find the key if we just look somewhere. Let's look somewhere else. Well, we have these forceps, right? For the medical mannequin? Well, we got an organ. So... Oh. So we took an, the organ thingy out of the chest thingy. It's a lung, not an organ thingy. Huh? This part here on the back, it's all rubbery. You're right. So it's a fake organ, of course. So it's a f so it's a fake organ, of course it'll be. Wait, what's seven? What's seven grabbing it for? Hey, it feels like something's in here. You think we can cut through it with the rubber part? Uh huh. Let's try cutting this organ with a scalpel. We got a key. But for which part? I'm gonna try left first, because I always try left first. Cool, it's unlocked! Okay, it's for that one, I guess. There's these hooks. I think you can hand your co coat here. There's a bunch of hooks. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, let's see. Let's see if- huh, a piece of paper. What's this? Is this some kind of medical record? New material has been added to the file screen. File screen, huh? That means it's here. No. Low charts. No. Medical record. A medical record found in the preparation room. It has records for, for the two mannequins. There is a male mannequin named John and a female named Lucy. The records show each mannequin mannequin's total weight and the weight of their individual parts. Uh, okay. Okay, so that's that. Yeah, so this is their weight. And these are their parts. Interesting. I'm pretty sure I brute forced this one when I first did this. A cabinet with a drawer in it. Okay. Just making sure that I didn't miss anything. What the hell are you what what the hell are you doing? Don't you wanna get out of here? But I'm tired. Oh, interesting. I found a beaker. Uh huh. There are four, four different lights, each one with a different color: white, red, blue, and purple. Does this thing react to something, and then the lights, uh, then it lights up? Okay. I don't think we can do that, something with that yet. A sink. The doctors and nurses probably washed their hands here before an operation. Nothing suspicious here. Sink. Doesn't look suspicious. Hmm. It won't open. It looks like it's locked. There's a red plate on it. Do you think it means something? Damn. It's not opening. Locked, of course. The blue plate on here seems a little suspicious, though. Damn, it's not opening. I won't, I won't even budge. It's got this purple plate on it too. I know. We probably need to make colors here and then they open here. But we only found the fake chest. I don't think we can go there. I think that's the way out from what I remember. I mean, we can try and give Lucy her chest. If that's possible. No? Okay, maybe this also works for the other room. Maybe they're the both both the rooms need that key. Awesome, it's unlocked. It did. Okay. Oh, this is a lot of stuff. Hey, Junpei, do you think there's any slugs on this ship? Huh? Well, if there are, I was thinking we could put salt on them. What's she pointing at? The label says NAC. Yeah, salt. Salt, huh? Do you think Seven will shrivel up if we put it on him? <laughs> I don't think so. Hey! You say something? Hey, you say something? Uh, that was more accurate, I think. Hey, you say something? Yeah. There's a bottle of salt on the shelf. The label says NECL. Jinpei, there's a bottle of iron powder on, powder on the shelf. How do you know it's iron? The la label says VE. Yeah, that's iron. Stands for iron, right? Something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? 
It says NH3. It's ammonia, right? Ammonia stinks. Well, of course that stinks. It's ammonia. I was right. Ha. Oh, good stuff. Let's go for a drink. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says C2H2O, right? It's ethanol. It's ethanol. That's right. It is also known as ethanol alcohol. Ethyl alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is made of. So, you're gonna drink it? Nah, I won't. It might say that that's what, it's, what it is on the label, but there could be anything in there. What's this? Looks like a, a can with a spray nozzle. It says C CO2. So it's a can filled with carbon dioxide? Okay. Hey, Junpei! There's a dihydrogen monoxide on the, on the shelf. Why didn't you just say water? There's a note on top of the table. Iron 1, salt 2, water 3. Carbon dioxide, hmm? Ammonia, hmm? Ethanol, hmm? Huh? What do you think this is a hint for? Maybe it's got something to do with this box. I really need a piece of paper. Oh wait, I have a printer right here. I just won't use it because I don't use the printer anyway. Come on, piece of paper. I like writing it down better because then I remember it better too instead of writing it in like my phone. Okay, so iron one, salt is two, two, water is three, carbon. Dioxide is ammonia is an ethanol. I mean if it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Anyway, what's this? A blue liquid. And a red liquid. It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring some out on, onto the cap? Into the cap. Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's bright red. You think it's blood? No, blood is thicker than that. Then what is it? Beats me. It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Okay, same. What's that? It's bright blue. You think it's alien blood? Why is everything blood with you, Clover? Where the hell did you get that from? Then what do you think it is, Seven? I don't know, some sort of special bath soap? Uh, ugh, what a boring guess. <laughs> <laughs> These two. And it's all water. Well, look at the first line. Maybe a question mark represents a number? Yeah, I know. Um, I know. Water. Salt. Na is sodium and Cl is chloride. So salt's made up out of one sodium atom. Ah. Then iron is made out of one. A bottle of iron powder which is on the shelf. It says Fe on the bottle. And that only has one. CO2. Carbon and oxygen. So it's two. So carbon dioxide is made out of two. One carbon- oh, two. Two. So it's three? One carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So it's three then, I guess? The bottle of water on the shelf. The label says H2O. Because one hydrogen and two oxygen. Okay. Ethanol. So it's a bottle of ethanol on the shelf. The label says h 25 O five so two two carbon five water zero hydrogen 
So then it would be seven. I guess. A bottle of ammonia. It says NH3. NH3, I guess it's also three. So we have three threes? NH3. In other words, the money is made out of one nitrogen and three hydrogen. Thank God. Thank God for these descriptions. <laughs> ammonia. Let's do ammonia again. Methanol is made of two. Two? Six? Two, wait. Two? That's eight, so it's nine? I guess two plus six is eight plus one is nine. H must mean hot, and O probably stands for orphans. Hot orphans! So H2O, my, may, it must be made of two hot orphans. Seven! Oh, sorry. Seven! Is your head okay? Is your head okay? One, two. Carbon state or two molecules. One carbon. So that is. That's three. Carbon dioxide is three. One. One. And this is four. Okay. I don't know if I'm right, but the box is locked. Looks like you have to enter a passcode onto the keypad to open it. I can only en enter three numbers. E is for enter and C is for clear. So I guess we need carbon dioxide, ammonia, and ethanol. Once you put in the okay, yes we know. Let's give it a shot. I'm gonna say three, four, nine. Ooh, I did it. <laughs> By clicking way too much, but... There's something inside the box. Well, we got an arm. It's the right arm of the body. It's kind of creepy. Agreed. A heart. This thing is super creepy. This ain't good for the heart. The heart of the medical mannequin. So we got those liquids. You think oh. we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Clover nodded and left. Junpei was about to follow her when he realized that Seven wasn't following suit. Hmm? Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well. He looked up at Junpei distractedly, and then back down at the brown bottle he held cupped in his large ha large hands. Is is that a medicine bottle? I got curious about it. In response, Seven tossed the bottle gently to Junpei. He caught it and twisted it around to read the label. Ethylene diamine tartrate? Yeah, that's right. CDT. Thank God he read it. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still, it looks like it's cleaned my brain up. Jimpe looked up from the bottle. Oh, you remember something? Yeah. Seven nodded slowly and spoke. Well, I remember a story about EDT. Happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. <laughs> they were making it to sell as an industrial strength cleaner, like I told you before. But... A year after the factory started up... <laughs> <laughs> Something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into a sort of mutation of the original crystals, called a hydrate. Once the crystals turn into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals. As a hydrate, they were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere, even ones nowhere near that first American factory. 
They've been making crystals the same way, with the same materials and the same equipment and environment. But now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they formed turned into a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done years before, they'd never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just spread. Just like the glycerin. It was like... Man, how do you say it? That we talked about with June in the kitchen. Or in the freezer, really. Like the molecules were communicating with one another. Mm-hmm. Transmitting information in a way humans couldn't perceive. Jinpei is putting it together. This phenomenon spread throughout the world. Right. Jinpei looked up at Seven with half a smirk. Seven stared at him, dumbfounded. Yeah, that's... That's it exactly. But... How did you know? I heard another story, uh, kinda like that one. When? In the freezer. What? The free <laughs> yeah, June told me. Jinpei told Seven the story he'd heard about... Heard from June in the freezer in the kitchen. How one day glycerin began to crystallize, and the story of ice that wouldn't melt at a room temp at room temperature. Mm. When Jupiter was done, Seven looked thoughtful and absentmindedly rubbed the scar on his chin. Ice that doesn't melt at room temperature, huh? That sounds familiar. Yeah, hold up. I, I feel like I can remember something. It's right there. Seven squinted. His eyes stared off into space as if he were trying desperately to focus on something far Do away. You? Do you know about Ice Nine? Do you know about Ice Nine? Ice Nine? Ice Nine. Nine. Ice, 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 ice. Suddenly, Seven's eyes shot open. That's it. I remember now. That woman, she's on this boat. That woman? It's a ship. Seven. Come on. Alice! Who's Alice? Alice. Come on. The woman who won't melt at room temperature. Huh? It became clear to Seven that Junpei had no idea, idea what he was talking about. He ran his hand across his face and took a deep breath. You know how the Titanic sank on April 15th, 1912, right? Oh, here we go again. It's the mummy again, sure. Yeah, more than 1,500 people died. Worst maritime accident in history. There we go. At least he, Junpei is prefacing it as the maritime accident, not just a accident. The worst accident in history. What about it? Did you hear about the boat that was sent to collect the dead bodies? Uh, I think that was the RMS Carpathia, right? How do you know this? I don't even know this. It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the C.S. McKay Bennett. The McKay Bennett showed up on April 17th, two days after the accident. It set out from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. The Atlantic that far north was really cold. It would have to be for there to be icebergs and stuff. Anyway, the bodies they pulled out of the water were frozen solid. This isn't a very nice story. So, what happened next? Well, they say the McKay Bennett recovered something more than just dead bodies. There were various bits of stuff floating around in the water. Things the drowned had carried with them, or stuff that dislodged as the ship sank. One of the things they found was a coffin. A coffin? Yeah, a wooden one. The craftsman who made it must have been pretty skilled. It wasn't just a wooden coffin. It was all wood. No nails, no reinforcements, no gaps in the wood anywhere. The thing was airtight. The crew got pretty curious about what might be inside it and opened it up. They had to get a wedge and hammer it open. It was so well made. Inside. They found a woman. Or, I guess you should say, they found the dead body of a woman. Her hair was thick and black, and her skin rich brown with no blemishes or signs of decomposition. They say that she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. She was obviously dead, but everyone who looked at her said she just looked like she was sleeping. Her skin was so lifelike, she looked like she might wake up any minute. And she didn't. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen solid. Eventually, the McKay Bennett finished searching and returned to Halifax. 306 bodies were unloaded and taken ashore. However, it was warm enough that they began to thaw. They say that the stink was horrible. 
There was one body that didn't thaw. And that was? The girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought for sure that she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. But weeks passed and nothing happened. And a month passed. And another. And it was summer, and she was still frozen solid. After a while, people started to say she was some sort of miracle. Rumors about her started to spread. People came to visit Halifax from all over. After a while, people started to call her All Ice. Alice. Of course, those rumors didn't last long. Why? Well, she up and disappeared. One day Alice was there, the next day she wasn't. They say someone snuck into where they were keeping her and stole the body. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quickly. After a while, no one remembered her. You might be able to find something about her if you could find a newspaper from back then, but that's about it. Wait, you just said that she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. Now why the hell would you say something like that? Because I know. And just what is it you know? What happened to Alice after she was stolen? Jumping Gold. All right, tell me, what happened to Alice? Seven nodded slowly and took on the look of a man recalling something long buried. Well, around that time, the word was that there was a special black market in New York. All millionaires from all over the world. I've heard that Alice went up for auction there. The person who won the auction was Lord Dashiell Gordain. Gordain. The guy who made the Titanic or bought the, uh, the gigantic, sorry. You've heard that name before, right? Lord Gordain. Oh, isn't he the guy who bought the Gigantic? The Titanic sister ship? Yeah, that's him. Although I guess he hadn't done that yet. What do you mean? Gordain bought Alice in 1912. And four years later, in 1916, he bought the Gigantic. And he hid Alice somewhere on the Gigantic. But nobody knows where. He died in 1931. And apparently, he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hidden. However... However... what? Well, he did have one close friend who asked him, where is Alice? And he said, Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. What the hell is that? Is it some kind of riddle? Your guess is as good as mine. Seven threw his hands up in defeat. So that's it. Whatever you think, I believe it. She's hidden somewhere on the gigantic. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. And you still don't have proof that this is the gigantic, though. Hmm. Before Junpei could dispute Seven's rather bizarre claim, as Junpei was trying to figure out what on earth was he had, he was going to say next. Clover's shrill voice pierced the room. Hey, what are you two doing over there? That was pretty accurate. Stop wasting time and get over here. Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez. Seven looked at Junpei. Yeah. So, anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. With that cryptic remark, he turned and left the room. Alice. Huh. Junpei was left behind to ponder what he just heard. He tried to remember what June had told him earlier. That mummy, that mummy wasn't, wasn't just, just a normal, normal mummy. mummy. They, they say, say that, that she, she was, was frozen. frozen. The story, the story says... says. That from the time of its discovery, all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. Even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Then was that Egyptian priestess, Alice? Did the water in her body become Ice Nine? Possibly. No, that, that's nuts. There's no <laughs> way somebody like that could exist. Jimpy shook his head, trying to desperately to trying desperately to clear it, and followed Seven to the operating room where Clover was waiting. That was fun. Oh, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here again. Hey, it turned red. Forget about that. Did you hear that just now? did. Oh, oops. Red. Got it. The leg. Ok. 
Okay. It's blue now. I think I heard another noise. I know. I'm just, I wasn't trying to click that. Now we need purple, so... Get, I get it. You combine the red and the blue liquor to make a purple one. Good job, Jinpei. The purple light came on, and I heard it unlock. I'm sure it's unlocked. The locker with the purple plate has got to be unlocked. How many times again you see unlocked? All right, let's see what happened. Okay. This is a really big nose. <laughs> it's not a nose. That's no nose. It's a stomach. Oh, a stomach. This is the left foot of the mannequin. Do you think I'm better? Huh? What? Do you think my legs are skinnier? <clears throat> it's not about that girl, it's about who you are. The right foot of the medical mannequin. I guess it's a woman's foot, but damn, doesn't she look hot at all? But damn, she doesn't look hot at all. Have you have you got a thing for feet seven? N no, that that's crazy. She's definitely a feet feet fetish. You're such you're sure acting shady. That bottle has purple liquid in it. Oh. I, I just thought check, you know. Okay, wait. An old hard bed, yes, I know. There's some kind of device attached to the bed. It says kilograms on the panel. Is this a scale? Okay. Okay, so we've collected the six parts of the medical mannequin. So the ones that we've got must be for Lucy, right? Yeah. It seems like it. It seems like it. Well, I'll say we gave give Lucy her parts back. Any objections? Nope. I agree. I'm pretty sure our John over there would be happy too. All right, let's get started. Combine. Happened. That's odd. Maybe it's the wrong way. Wait? Yeah, well, you know how there is a scale on the side of the bed? Maybe we need to get the scale to a specific number. How are we gonna do that? I think we're supposed to swap her body's parts with John's. Oh. Let's give it a shot. Operating instructions. The screen will display two medical mannequins. You can switch their body parts by selecting the part you want to switch out. This is such a weird one. <laughs> I'm gonna switch everybody. Wait, really? It was that easy? I just switched out all of her parts with his parts, except his heart? Maybe it's a commentary. How about how men actually have a female heart, like a fragile female heart. Even though they look like a man, you know? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying stuff. Hey Junpei, I just heard something. It came from John's operating table. We better ca better check it out. Mm. I'll check it out. An operating table. Do you think an old operating table? Do you think old operating tables look like this? I have no idea. Huh? The lid on the scale. Hey, it opened. Oh, I get it. It must have opened because he matched John's weight to what's on the chart. Got a Jupiter key. Wait, let me just. There's a mark. In, there's a mark engraved on this key. I think it's the Jupiter symbol. I'm sure it is the Jupiter symbol.
Hey, hold on. Have we got out? Come on. Junpei stopped. About to put the key in the c into the doorknob. Oh, uh, what's up? The doorknob is that. This is not a doorknob. Where's Clover? Huh? Not here. Jinpei turned around. Clover no, was nowhere to be seen. Oh, God damn it. Where the hell did she go? Uh, okay, j just hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Jinpei left Seven at the door and headed back to the operating room. He found her standing next to the operating table. She was staring at the mannequin. Hey, Clover. What's wrong? Come on. Let's get out of here. Uh... <sighs> She didn't respond. If she hadn't been standing up and breathing, Jinpei might have thought that she was dead. What are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? <laughs> it wasn't the best joke, but it was something, an attempt to lighten the mood. Clover didn't laugh. She stood stock still and said nothing. Hey, Clover. Sorry, oh, sorry, I clicked again. Shit, sorry. Perhaps it was something she, he'd said, or perhaps it was something else. Suddenly her mouth opened and she whispered in a dry, dead voice. My brother might be dead. Uh, huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm going to be next. Suddenly the operating room felt very, very cold. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but still she didn't respond. Uh the sounds grew heavier. Jinpei, what do you want to do? But we have this, the four-leaf clover. Oh yeah. He didn't know why, but suddenly Jinpei remembered something he'd been given earlier. It's in my pocket somewhere. Um, ah, here it is. He reached into his pocket and dug it out. A four-leaf clover. Santa had given to hit Santa had given it to him in a second class room. It's a second class room, not third class. Okay. He held it out to Clover. Hey, did you know? Each leaf means something. Hope, faith, love, and luck. That's what a four-leaf clover stands for. Take it. Use it as a good luck charm. He pressed the four-leaf clover into her hand. Listen to me, Clover. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. <laughs> Snake, I, I mean, your brother, he's not dead. He's alive, somewhere. I, I'm sure of it. You've just gotta believe in that. <gasps> Clover stared at the four-leaf clover in her hand. You could see tears starting to form at the corners of her eyes. Thank you. Her voice was tiny and broken, and as she spoke, she started to cry. She tried to hide her tears by looking at the floor, but it did little good. She wiped away the tears with the baggy arms of her jacket, but more quickly took, but more quickly took their place. No matter how much how she tried, she couldn't stop crying. Her tears made small wet circles on the floor. Thank you. She said it again, and she looked up at Junpei. And, it, and seemed to choke down the last of her grief. It, it, she did her best to smile. Junpei wiped an errant f tear from her cheek with his thumb and gave her the best smile he could manage. Come on. Seven's waiting for us at the exit. But still, she didn't move. Wait, before we go, there's one thing I want to ask you. What's that? What do you think when you hear the word experiment? For a moment, his mind froze. When he came back to his senses and realized the word meant nothing to him aside from the dictionary definition. Uh, what? Oh, huh. I guess it was just a coincidence then. I mean, that you knew about the four-leaf clover. Uh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I, I don't want to be a jerk, but you are making less than no sense right now. Oh, no, 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 it's nothing. Just forget about it. Oh, don't don't give me that. Uh, you really think I could just drop this? What is this experiment you were talking about? Clover looked away. The four-leaf clover was still in her hand. She stared at it for a long moment and then finally spoke. You promise you won't tell anyone? Cross my heart. Really? Really. I can trust you, right? Of course you can. 
Clover, Clover slipped a four-leaf clover in her pocket. Her eyes still red from crying, she looked up at Junpei. Okay then, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened on this ship nine years ago. Wait, wait, wait. On this ship? Yeah, this ship. He was entirely lost. She had he had a thousand questions, but it was probably best he thought to save them until Clover had finished. It was an experiment to test some sort of psychic thing, communicating through these fields that you can't see. Fields that you can't see? He'd heard something like this before. Clover nodded. Like, think about this. He pointed at the operating table. On top of it was some what this a somewhat mismatched medical mannequin whose parts had been swapped with another mannequin. This is John, right? Yes, it's John. But is he really John? Huh? All Jimpy could think was she had finally completely lost it. Isn't this like Locke's socks or the ship of Theseus? Um. Jimpei grew even more confused. He'd never heard of either of those things, although they sounded smart. You don't know? You haven't heard of those paradoxes? No? Jimpei shook his head. Really? Clover laughed. Okay, well pay attention then. This is how Locke's socks works. Let's say I've got a pair of socks. They're my favorite socks. One of them gets a hole in it. What would you do if that was your sock, Junpei? My favorite sock? I'd probably sew it together. Or throw it away. Or throw it away. Oh, I'd pitch it, I guess. But it's your favorite pair of socks! Yeah, and it's just socks. Come on, who loves their socks that much? Exactly. It doesn't matter. Just suppose you do love them that much. Hmm. Well, I guess then I'd patch it. But what if another hole opens? I'd add another patch, I suppose. What if another hole opened after that? Um, another patch, I guess? Well, let's say you just keep adding new patches until eventually the original cloth of the sock is to- Once you get to that point, can you really say they're the same socks you started with? Hmm, uh, well that, hmm. That's... oh, that, that's tough. No. The answer to that is no. <laughs> Junpei crossed his arms. So, that's the Locke Socks thing? Yeah, the ship of Theseus is a lot like it. The ship of Theseus. If you keep fixing the damaged parts of a ship... Eventually, it ends up with none of the parts it started with. Can you really say that ship is the same one you started with? And what if you took all the old parts from the first ship and built another one somewhere else? Then which ship is the real ship of Theseus? The first one. The one you repaired, or the one you built with all the original parts? The one that has the name on the side of the boat. <laughs> or the ship. Hmm. It was an interesting question. Clover could see Jinpei was intrigued. Hey, do you think it's the same? What's the same? These guys. Is this John? Or is it Lucy now? Jinpei looked at the operating table again. Uh... A mannequin full of body parts from a different body. Clover had been right. It was just like Lock Socks in the ship of Theseus. The part of the body that holds the person's ident identity is the head. Of course, for many hundreds of years, conventional wisdom had held that a man's identity resided in his heart, or any of n any of number of or internal organs. And there, and here, they had both. John's head and heart are both his, but apart from those and a single arm, the rest of his body was once Lucy's. Was that mannequin really John? We're just like these mannequins. You looked at Jumpy again. Think about it. The cells in our body change every day. Old ones die and new ones are born. Maybe part of my arm is made of stuff from a fish I ate once. Or maybe part of your right side is made from a cow you ate. If you take it a little further... 
those cows and fishes are made from something else too, right? That's how we're all connected. Through fields that can't be seen with the naked eye. The silence is broken by seven. Hey, what the hell has taken you two so long? Seven's hand appeared in the doorway. He was not happy. How long are you going to make me wait? We don't have time to screw around. Ah. <sighs> Junpei and Clover looked at each other. Clover looked at Junpei as if to say there was more that she wanted to tell him. She shook her head. Whatever she had to tell him, she didn't want to tell him in front of Seven. Seven seemed to catch on. Oh? What were you two doing? Was this some sort of secret meeting? No, yes. it wasn't. Yes, it was. We were just... Just... Playing with the mannequins? Playing with the mannequins. <laughs> I remember this one. <laughs> huh? Playing with the mannequins. Let's go, Junpei. Moving a little bit too fast to be entirely on innocent, Clover headed towards the exit. Seven stared after her and then turned to Junpei with an amused expression. Playing with mannequins, huh? Didn't know you were into that kind of thing, Junpei. <sighs> You're a dick. <laughs> yes, he is. But he's an amusing kind of dick. <laughs> Junpei dashed past, dashed past him and traced Clover's path out to the door. Out the door. With a short laugh, Seven followed. They stood in front of the door. Junpei took out the Jupiter key. All right, I'm going to open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, all right? <sighs> Fine, then. He slid the key into the keyhole and turned it. Hey, he's just asking for consent. That's, uh, that's hot. He felt it unlock. He felt it unlock. That's a better way to say that, but okay. I'm learning. I'm still learning how to read properly. The door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. <sighs> Beyond it lay a simple white hallway. There was no fanfare or confetti. Obviously, there was no one there to applaud them. They simply walked through the door. That was it. Alright, let's get going. Hey man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy? You know, get a little excited? <sighs> Ugh. Not really. Jinpei turned away from Seven and took his first step down the simple white hallway. <sighs> My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Clover had told them only a few minutes before that her brother was probably dead, and she was likely to follow him. Like hell I can. Not after hearing something like that. You found it! Boom! And I think with that, we are going to leave the episode there. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next episode while we are listening to these trampling footsteps. But I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!